Far East Broadcasting Company Philippines in partnership with Green Hills Christian Fellowship Ortigas bring you a message from the Word of God. Together, let us know Christ and make Him known. Good morning and Happy New Year to all of you, those who are here uh, on site and those who are uh, worshiping with us online. I thank God also for this privilege to preach the word to you this uh, first Sunday of January. You know, Pastor Larry gave me a very wonderful gift uh, last Sunday when he said, Ed, uh, can, you, can you preach in lieu of me? Uh, it's always a privilege to just be able to preach the word. And it is a perfect gift that uh, Pastor Larry gave to me. And I'm just so grateful to the Lord uh, for just giving me this pri- privilege. Again, to those worshiping with us on site uh, or online, Happy New Year, a joyous New Year to you all. Despite the rising cases of COVID, again, uh, as 2022 opened, we can thank our sovereign Lord. He still sits on the throne. He knows what he is doing. He has given us a new year to trust him and obey him anew. There is a race this year that we will have to run again. It's so nice that the the choir was uh, singing about when the race is complete, still my praise shall repeat. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. We rejoice in him. We thank him for who he is. He is God. And he is good. Our circumstances, no matter how hard, they do not change who God is. He is good and gracious all the time. He is in control all the time. He is faithful to his character. The last two years was hard for many, if not for all of us. We are not yet over this pandemic. And the storm, the super storm hit Southern Philippines. And we still can't see the end of this pandemic or it will, will it ever end. I think we're going to be in alert level three again uh, this Monday. You know, the cases as of yesterday was at its highest uh, since uh, October, I think. Our circumstances have been faith stretching. We have collectively and individually endured much trial and suffering. But I thank the Lord that you who are here and who are worshiping with us online continue to worship God. You are enduring. You continue to run the race of faith. You may be here today with your faith in Christ stronger than ever. You have been tested by the very difficult circumstances of the last two years. You endured, and your faith in Christ remained firm or even strengthened. But some of you, I know, suffered so much. Your faith may be wavering. Hold on. Endure. Run the race. Or some of you may have not even even started the race. You have not yet believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're here with us, worshiping. While the writer of Hebrews was primarily addressing believers whose faith is wavering, this passage in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, is profitable for all of us. For those who are wavering, it teaches us to endure and not to give up in our faith in Jesus. For those who are standing firm and have endured and are even stronger, it affirms that you are running the race well. And for all of those who are yet to start the race, you will find something in this passage why you need to start running the race. The writer of Hebrews in this verse uses the imagery of a contest, an athletic competition, a struggle to picture what a life of faith in Christ is like. 
More specifically, the writer, we don't know who the writer is. Uh, and I hope no theologian will, will uh, scold me, but sometimes I think it's Paul. More specifically, the writer uses the metaphor of a marathon, a long distance running race, which requires much endurance, which requires a lot of discipline, which requires a lot of focus, which requires a lot of guidance. The life of faith is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not a walk in the park. Whoever sold you to believe in Jesus Christ because life will be hunky-dory after you believe in him, think again. The life of faith is like running a marathon race. Faith in Christ requires endurance. Endurance is the mark of genuine faith. The imperfect people in faith's hall of fame endured. They are the people who were named by the writers in Hebrews chapter 11. But here, he will also tell us, this writer, our perfect Jesus endured as he trusted his father completely, perfectly. Our passage calls us to endure and run the race of faith set before us. Forward in faith, that is what we ought to do. This new year and every year beyond. You know, I like uh, one message that I just got from one of our CBSG leaders. He said, um, wow, another stopover. Well, yes, it's a stopover, but we are moving towards the end of the race. It's just a stopover. Every year is just a stopover. And we are moving still. There are two things we can see in this passage. First, we need to follow the examples of people of faith. Second, we need to fix our eyes on the perfecter of faith. That is how we can endure by trusting God, by following the examples, even imperfect people who trusted God, but fixing the eyes, our eyes on the one who is perfect, the perfecter of our faith, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read to you verse 1 of chapter 12. Therefore, and I hope you have your Bibles open. Uh, please have your Bibles open so you can look at the verses. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Therefore, therefore, he just spoke of the people of faith in chapter 11. He had been speaking about faith all this time. And then he said, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, these are the people who have proven their faith, who have run the faith. Abraham, Moses, David, uh, Rahab, Samson, Gideon, and all those whose names he mentioned and those Many others he couldn't even name anymore. The writer of Hebrews was specifically referring to this cloud of witnesses, the examples of faith that he was recounting. They are weak witnesses, not because they are looking at us, but they are witnesses because they, are, they have testified of their life of faith. These exemplar, ex examples or exemplars endured and finish the race of faith by trusting God. They run the race of faith marked for each of them. The writer to the Hebrews encouraged his readers and he's encouraging us to be like this cloud of witnesses. He said, he said, let us also, let us also. We follow the examples of people of faith. 
What did they do to show their trust for God, to God? First, they lay aside their encumbrances. They eliminated, eliminated the encumbrances that weighed them down. Second, they chose sin. They didn't like to sin. They avoided sin. And then finally, they embraced. They embraced the race that God had marked for them. They embraced and run the race that God has ordained for them. They eliminated, eliminated encumbrances that weighed them down in running the race. You know, the word translated encumbrance describes a prominent mass or bulk that protrudes, <laughs> that is a hindrance to efficient running. You know? uh, it is an extra unnecessary weight that impedes or hinders. You know, a runner lays aside, he eliminates anything that makes it so cumbersome to run. 40 years ago, I was 25 pounds lighter. I can easily run a five kilometer race. Fast, quite fast. I, I, I do it competitively 40 years ago. But today, with my extra mass, I will be happy if I can endure a one hour brisk walking. If I will ever run again, I need to shed this unnecessary weight. But at least, I don't have to run naked to take away superfluous weight. That was what athletes in those ancient days did. They just run naked so that there will be no weight. And perhaps people will see there's nothing that is impeding them in the middle of their belly. To the audience of this letter, this old Jewish religion was an encumbrance. Their old religion was their encumbrance that they had to lay aside. They were still looking to the old covenant legalistic rituals. The temptation to return to their old religion and beliefs were weighing them down. This was why the writer of Hebrews is stressed the supremacy of Christ, the superiority of Christ. You have heard Pastor Larry preach week after, or month after month on the superiority of Christ. He is superior to the angels. He's the creator of this world. He is a superior high priest. He is God who became man so that he can uh, uh, be like us. He is superior. He is supreme. They, these Jewish believers, do not need to go back to their old tradition. Or perhaps the threat of suffering persecution may also be weighing down on them. Although none of them have been martyred in sins uh, from the letter, they are well too familiar with believers being publicly insulted, being imprisoned, or their properties being confiscated for their faith in Christ. You can see that in Hebrews chapter 10, 32 to 34. What encumbrances are weighing you down from running your race? Well, we may have left a legalistic and works-based religion for those who are believers in Christ, but have we replaced it with some legalistic rituals, with new, new legalistic rituals? Have we made coming to church, giving our tithes, doing our Bible studies, praying, preaching even, church planting? Is it just a chore, a task? And we're not doing it because for a love for Jesus, it's just an encumbrance, a responsibility that we have to do. Otherwise, people will criticize us. Or we may be undergoing severe and intractable trials and suffering. And we are starting to lose faith in Jesus. Our problems seem never to abate. It never leaves us. It's always there. We cannot manage it. How can we eliminate or lay aside encumbrances that cannot change or be removed? Perhaps you've been born with disabilities. Or you are in a toxic environment. You cannot change. Or this pandemic which not, doesn't abate, have caused you so much loss, and there's not much you can do about it. How can we lay aside 
these encumbrances. We lay aside these immovable mountains of encumbrances by trusting in Jesus and enduring with faith in Him in these hard places. You remember the sermon of Pastor Dati. If God does not give you miracles, the miracle that you prayed for, what should happen? Let yourself be the miracle. Let him change you. Let him make you trust him even more in these very hard places. He may not save us from the fire. But he will save us through the fire. Perhaps you're being persecuted for your faith, being put down, being denied a fair share because you are not one of the guys or one of the girls. Is this weighing you down so that you are considering slacking off from your faith in Christ? Consider this, chapter 10, verse 34 of Hebrews. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully, you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property, since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one. If you have faith in Christ, it's hard to accept, but nothing else matters. We have this greater possession. We have this greater inheritance. We have Jesus. And it is abiding one. Perhaps the pride of life, possessions, position, or power is weighing you down. Consider this about Moses in verse 26 of chapter 11. Moses considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking forward to the reward. Are the ambitions of this world weighing you down? You know, there's nothing wrong with having ambition of wanting to better your life, but is it weighing you down such that these things become your treasures? Consider Moses. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Perhaps pain of previous failures are weighing you down. There's guilt, there's loss that cannot be recovered. How did Paul pray? How did he, he look at his situation when he was asking the Lord to take away this thorn in his flesh? And the Lord wouldn't put it away. What did he say? Oh, Lord, your grace is sufficient for me. Your grace is sufficient for me. Or when he was remembering his victories, you know, his, his own position as a Pharisee, a Hebrew of Hebrews, of the tribe of Benjamin, of Israel, with regard to being a Pharisee, faultless. What did he say? Forgetting what lies behind, I strain forward to that what lies ahead, which is still there, it's already mine, but it's still not here with me. Do not let encumbrances weigh you down. Not only did these exemplars of faith eliminate encumbrances, they trusted God by avoiding sin. They should sin of unbelief and other sins that entangle them. The writer of Hebrews warned his readers against the sin of unbelief primarily. And you'll see that everywhere in this, past, in this, uh, in this letter. That was the main, main uh, context for which the uh, writer of Hebrews was uh, writing to his audience. Go back to your faith. Don't fall into the sin of unbelief. They were in danger of drifting away by neglecting the great salvation in Christ that they have received when they first believed in Jesus. 
The sin of unbelief can trip us while we are running the race of faith, as we live a life of faith. Now, you may be a believer in Christ, but you're going through a lot. And sometimes, unbelief creeps in, and your faith is wavering. Brothers, sisters, you can always pray the prayer of this father who wanted his son who was demon-possessed to be released by Jesus who, from this demon. But did he say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I had some faith. He needed more. Pray. The Lord, the Lord will answer you. Well, while the context of Hebrews may refer and may be pointing to the sin of unbelief, it's a, you know, it's a singular, you know, sin, you know. Uh, he says, um, the way it was written was, uh, <clears throat> and, and the sin, and sin, which clings closely, in other versions, and the sin, all right, that's, uh, that clings closely. But the context of Hebrews may be referring to the sin of unbelief, any sin for that matter, <clears throat> can trip you and ensnare you as you run the race. You know, I, when I used to run, I, uh, competitively, I always make sure that I uh, tie my laces twice, you know, because, uh, you know, it's so, it's crazy when this shoelace gets out or gets uh, untangled and you step on it and then you, you get tripped. You get tripped. Any unconfessed sin would trip you with guilt. An unrepentant heart will deny you fellowship with God, even fellowship with other believers. And you need this fellowship with God and believers if you are to be strong, to be able to endure, and to be steadfast and run the race. Sin is a snare that can stop you on your tracks. Now, what is sin? And how do we escape the snare? You know, last Friday... Betty and I were having breakfast. We heard the noise of flapping wings inside the exhaust channel of our rain suit. A bird went beyond its boundaries. He entered through our exhaust pipe from outside the house and got trapped inside the channel of the rain suit. Now, that bird cannot escape unless we graciously help him or her. I don't know. Yeah. It would not be able to escape. Sin is when you step out of bounds and transgress God's standards. When sin trips us and snares or entangles us, the only means to escape is to confess and repent and return to Jesus and accept his forgiveness. He will free you from the guilt so that you can again stand up and run the race. You can stand up and continue and endure. Now, you may have a favorite sin that always trips you. Impure thoughts, a critical spirit, excessive anxiety and worry, uncontrolled anger, ungrateful hearts, lying, whatever it is. We need to get rid of it. We need to eschew it, to deliberately avoid and abstain from sin if we are to run the race with endurance. Now, 2022 is now before us. Are you already a believer in Christ? Is Jesus already your Lord and Savior? Is there any sin you need to confess and repent of? No, no, I'm not talking of a New Year's resolution that you will promise to do for 2022. I am talking about refreshing your relationship and fellowship with the Father by confessing and repenting of your sin. Do that today. Do that now even as you listen. Receive the grace of forgiveness in Christ. Let him free you of the guilt. Let them free you from this power of sin so that you can just run the race and not be ensnared and entangled by the sin. Do it now, my brother, my sister, 
Do not let that sin trip you in 2022. Or perhaps you are not yet in Christ. You have not made a deliberate decision to believe in Jesus as the only one who can save you from sin. You have not even started to believe. You have not turned over your life to him and confessed him as your Lord and Savior. Friend, start the year right. Know that we are all sinners. Those who profess Jesus Christ who are here, they know they are sinners. We know that the wages of sin is death, eternal separation from God. And we know that we cannot save ourselves. The only thing we can do is repent of our sins and believe and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. He died on the cross for our sin. He paid the penalty for our sin. You have heard Pastor BJ preach so passionately last Friday and even the Sunday before. He paid for our sins. Finished. The debt has been paid. What we need to do, because we cannot save ourselves, is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the sufficient payment for our sin. Believe in Him as He's our Savior, and at the same time, make Him your Lord. Tell Him you will obey Him. You will live a life. You will run the race believing in Him. He will not reject you. In fact, friends, if you do that, you will know that you are one of those whom he has chosen to be saved. I trust that you will pray that prayer today for those who have not yet believed. Repent of your sin. Believe and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he rose again from the dead victorious over sin. He died, yet he rose again. And turn your life over to him. The writer of Hebrews warns us not to neglect the great salvation offered by God in Christ. The great salvation. It is a great salvation because we are saved from a great calamity, the wrath of God. We are saved by a great sacrifice of a great Savior who saved us by his great love and grace. If you haven't yet received Jesus Christ, believe this. They trusted God, these exemplars of faith, by eliminating encumbrances that weigh them down, by eschewing sin. But they trusted God also by embracing God's will for them to run the race of faith on the road ordained for them. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Each of the exemplars of faith had a similar race to run. Similar in the sense that they all are running the race of faith. But they have different arenas where they had to run the race. Abraham had to believe he, had a, he, he will have a son even in his old age. He had to believe that even if he sacrificed Isaac, God would still fulfill his promise of blessing him with many nations. And Moses had to believe that the Pharaoh will, let, Pharaoh will let God's people go and that he will be the one, Moses, lead them out to the promised land. Each of the individuals in the faith's hall of fame, each had to run with endurance. The race of faith in the life God had uniquely ordained for them. The writer of Hebrews instructs his readers to do the same. The race is set before them. They have left their Jewish religion. They cannot turn back. Their faith will be tested in Christ. They need to embrace with endurance the unique trials they will face. Each of them will have their unique roads, paths, lanes where they will run the race. We are to do the same. If you have put your trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the race of faith is set before you. It's set before you. It's right in front of you. 
This new year is right in front of us. Your life ahead of you is in front of you. That race of faith that you are to run is right in front of you. If you have put your trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, embrace what God has given you. Embrace it. We are where we are because it is God's sovereign purpose and plan. Trust Him. Trust Him. Let us run in our own lanes with our enduring faith, no matter how challenging and grueling. Let us not compare ourselves with others who may seem to be having it easy and say, Lord, bakit siya? Dali-dali ng buhay niya. Wala siyang problema. But ako na, parang sa akin mo lang yata lahat. Ibinagsak ang problema ng mundo. My world is crumbling. While others are having it better. No. No. We have it's a unique path, road, ordained by God. Embrace it. The sovereign God has a good purpose and plan. Yes, we do have this unique road that we need to run, but we never have to run it privately. We do it with community. You know, you know other commentators talk about the witnesses, this cloud of witnesses, as spectators, you know, cheering these believers on earth on. But, you know, that's not really the context. But, but even if that is not the context, you know, the Christian race of faith is run in community. You have one another to cheer each other on. Oh, how I wish. How I wish that there would be a time when I get into that choir room and the choir members are there just with their voices encouraging one another, encouraging me, and then I encourage them. There was no one there this morning. But God is still good. We're here. Those online are still with us in community. We do not run the race alone. Even if we do have our own lanes, it's of our lives ordained by God. Let us encourage one another so that we can endure. The people of faith in the Faith's Hall of Fame endured. They trusted God. They eliminated encumbrances that weighed them down. They avoided sin. They embraced their life of faith. This cloud of witnesses surround us to serve as examples, to help us endure as we run our own races. Now, like the saints of old, believers endure. This is the truth I want for you to learn in this part, this portion of our study. Believers endure and complete their lives of faith by trusting God. Be like the saints of old. Endure and complete your lives of faith by trusting God. So what trials and temptations, what encumbrances are weighing you down or causing you to stumble in your faith at this time? Let the examples of faith inspire us. But, you know, better still, maybe what would be better is this. Not that they just inspire us, but, but you, I, all of us, inspire one another. Let each of us be an example for each other to encourage one another. Let us be examples of people of faith. Faith in Christ requires endurance. Endurance is a mark of genuine faith. <clears throat> a runner in the race needs to fix his eyes or her eyes on the finish line, on the goal. He has to concentrate, he has to focus to endure and finish well. He must not be distracted. He could lose rhythm and concentration or he might trip and he might fall. To be able to endure and finish the race of faith, we not only follow examples, 
We fix our eyes on Jesus. The examples we follow, none of them will be perfect. But we fix our eyes on the perfecter of faith. Hebrews 12, 2 to 3, and let me read from ESV. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary of, or faint-hearted. Fix our eyes. I will use NIV just for now and NASB. Fix your eyes on the perfecter of faith. I will go, up, go back to ESV later. Fix our eyes on the perfecter of faith. You know, this fix their eyes, I, I just uh, remember, I, I, the Lord gave me an opportunity to go back to, you know, to just refresh my scuba diving uh, experience. And, you know, I, I had to be refreshed and be instructed again. Then my, my pamangkin, uh, you know, uh, he was going to give me the instruction just to make sure that I remember. So we had to go down, you know, you know just uh, shallow water. But we cannot talk to each other. I cannot hear him. He cannot hear me. So... The way, we will, uh, the way he will signal me is this. So in face mask, I have my face mask. He would say, fix your eyes on me. Look at what I am doing. Follow it. Follow the pattern that I'll be say, showing you. Fix. Well, better still, when you're running a marathon, fix your eyes on the finish line when you're running the race of faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Why? Why? Because Jesus is the perfect guiding light. Because Jesus is the perfect pattern of godly living. Because Jesus promised us the grace to last. Jesus is the perfect guiding light. We can fix our eyes on him. In military history, soldiers are known to endure the struggle of battle when a battle-tested leader commands them. These soldiers trust their leader, their battle-tested leader, even if the leader may have flaws. They follow their leader's guidance. Jesus is our battle-tested leader, and he is perfect. He achieved perfect victory. His faith in the Father has been tested and found true and perfect. He is flawless. He completely trusted the Father and obeyed Him perfectly. He is the pioneer, the founder, the first one, and the only one to do so. Not you, not me. No matter how hard we try to follow Jesus, we will never be able to do it perfectly. He was the one who did it perfectly. That's why he can be our guiding light. Because he is perfect, we can fix our eyes on him. He will lead us. He is our guiding light who will lead us and direct us as we run the race of faith in this world, which is what? Which is darkened by sin and the suffering it brings. We need the perfect guiding light, Jesus. We focus on no one else and nothing else as we run the race. We don't focus on people, the best of them fail. We don't focus on our progress. We become either proud or complacent. We don't focus on our predicament or our problems. We will become discouraged and disappointed. We focus on the person of Jesus. Even in our ministries, we don't want to focus on programs or projects. I like our slogan, no Christ. That's the first. No Christ. Focus on Him. Concentrate on Him. Be intimate with Him. Listen to His Word. Read His Word. Study His Word. Obey it. Focus. 
on Him before we make Him known. No, we cannot wait until we know Him completely. We keep on knowing Him and we keep on making Him known. But we focus on Him. We fix our eyes on Jesus so we can endure and follow Him. We go where He leads us. At the time He tells us, in the manner He directs us, through the road where He leads us, He takes us, and empowered by the Spirit, He gives us. We fix our eyes on Jesus, our guiding light, because He is our battle-tested leader who lived a perfect life of faith. We fix our eyes on Jesus also because He has given us the pattern of godly lives, the perfect pattern of godly lives. You know, it's easier to endure when we are realistic of the expectations of the road we have to travel. You know, I think of my, the, the, the CBSG leaders, uh, you know, we have uh, 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 City Bible students uh, who are uh, helping me uh, in the church planting. You know, I'm really hoping that uh, they, he, they will not one of these days tell me, Pambihira ka naman, Ed? Hindi mo sinabi na ganito kahirap? You know, when I invited them, many of them, all of them asked them, what, what will they do? I said, I don't know. Just be sure God is calling you. Just be sure God is calling you. Pray. And they took the step of faith. God empowers them. And they have been receiving rewards after rewards. And they are joyful. In World War II, Winston Churchill spoke stirring words and inspired England to fight and endure. Uh, he did not sugarcoat, Winston did not sugarcoat, uh, oh, Churchill did not uh, sugarcoat the suffering they have to endure. What did he say? I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many months of struggle and suffering. But, Churchill not only painted the difficulties of the struggle, he also painted the delight of success. He says, let us therefore brace ourselves to our duty and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, Men will still say, this was their finest hour. Oh, the delight of success. The delight of success comes after the difficulties of the struggle. We fix our eyes on Jesus so that we know what to expect when we follow him faithfully. Now, Jesus did not speak steering words as churches did. He not only spoke stirring words as Churchill did, Jesus showed steadfast work. Jesus perfectly walked the talk. He showed us the pattern of godly life. We know what to expect. What is the pattern? Pastor BJ preached on Philippians chapter 2. Humiliation and suffering before exaltation. That's the pattern. That's the pattern of a life of faith. We suffer, we endure following Jesus Christ. There will be joys along the way. But really the final glory, the final joy is beyond. When we finish the race, Jesus endured suffering. No pain, no gain. There may be a worldly Philosophy, but it is true. Also in the life of faith. Jesus endured suffering. He was a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. He suffered from the hostility of sinners. He counted the shame of the cross as nothing compared to the joy that awaits him. Friends, the cross, the cross is the most excruciating, most humiliating way of dying during 
those days. You die naked. Actually, they say that the artists were just trying to be very modest by covering Jesus Christ with this small, you know, piece of cloth in the paintings. But people who were crucified were naked. The Lord endured much shame and humiliation, but he counted the shame of the cross as nothing compared to the joy that awaits him. He now sits at the right hand of the Father in glory. He won the battle against sin. He now reigns. He, our high priest, is in heaven, taking care of us, listening to our prayers, sovereign ruling still in glory we will go through the same life pattern as Jesus we will not have it better than our master what did Jesus say if the world hated you me it will also hate you we will endure the hostility of sinners if you walk a life of faith and you try to shine your light and you become salt in your workplaces, in your family, be ready. Be ready. For some hostility. But that's okay. Our Lord, our Lord endured for the joy that is set before him. His trust in God was vindicated. You know, the life of faith of Jesus was also seen by how faithfully he prayed to the Father, especially in Gethsemane. Uh, you know, the Gospels are replete with, with, with illustrations of Jesus going out to just pray by himself. You want to endure in the life of faith? Pray. By the way, that reminds me just now. I am going to re-invite those who want to faithfully pray for the church planting ministry this coming 2022. So if you had received the text message from GCF uh, with a link uh, for Viber, uh, please just click on it uh, if you want to join the Viber prayer, we, Viber prayer community. Prayer marks also a life of faith. Jesus prayed. We need to be faithful in prayer. Joy also awaits us beyond this suffering. We have our inheritance. We will be with Jesus. We will be like him. There will be a time when we will no longer be in the presence of sin. And that will be glorious indeed. When we will be with the Lord Jesus. By understanding and expecting the pattern of Jesus' life, we will be inspired to endure and live godly lives. We will not grow weak or faint. We will stay strong. Inspiration from the Lord's pattern gives us the motivation to run the race to completion. But not only is he the perfect God. He's not only the per perfect guiding light. He did not only give us the perfect pattern for godly living. He promised us grace to last. We fix our eyes on Jesus because he will be the one to preserve us until we reach the finish line. He promised and will provide us the grace to complete the last mile of the race. He was not just a pattern who inspires he is the power that enables. Those who are exemplars of faith, they can be patterns who inspire, but they cannot give us power to enable. Jesus can. And here I'd like to use our ESV version. It says, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, 
of our faith. He originated our faith and he perfects our faith. What did we learn from Pastor BJ's sermon the last time we were dead in sin? We cannot even respond to Jesus. God had to give us the grace to be able to respond to him and have this faith in him. Faith is a gift. The source is God through Jesus. He started us in this race of faith. He gave us the faith. He will give us the faith until the end. Yes, yes, we will endure, but yet not I, but through Christ in me. God will not fail. The perseverance of the saints is in fact the power of God working in us. The perseverance of the saints is in fact the protection of Jesus preserving us. And the perseverance of the saints is in fact the persuasion of the Holy Spirit prodding us and convicting us. Jesus is the originator and perfecter of our faith. But we see another aspect of grace as we endure and run the race of faith. Enduring and suffering for our faith understandably evoke an image of misery. How can you have joy when you are in a hard place? How? Sometimes we think we just must accept this misery. Anyway, we will have joy when we get to heaven. And didn't Jesus just endure for the joy that awaits him beyond the suffering and the shame of the cross? Friends, when we consider Jesus and fix our eyes on him, we not only are able to endure because of the joy that awaits us, we are also able to experience joy as we endure. What is joy? Joy is a gift from God. It comes as part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit who comes to dwell in us. When we believe Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you will have it. You have the Holy Spirit. You have joy. You can be patient. We have it. It is a happiness that does not depend, joy is a happiness that does not depend on our external circumstances, but on the inner peace and calm because we have peace with God. And we have the peace of God. The peace that surpasses understanding, the peace of God in Christ. Joy comes when we consider and delight in Jesus even as we go through the suffering of life and the trials of our faith. We see his works, we see his word, we enjoy him. We who believe in Christ can rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. We can give thanks in all circumstances. We can consider it all joy when we face trials of many kinds. James chapter 1. Because the trials of our faith are producing in us endurance and endurance will work its perfect work in us. Friends, we can have joy as we go through suffering. We fix our eyes on Jesus and we will not grow weary and faint-hearted. We can endure, not miserably, but joyfully. Endurance is a mark of genuine faith. The life of faith in Christ requires endurance. You know, let me just give my daddy as an illustration. I just want to honor him. You know, dad, my daddy is 90 years old. He turned 90 this November. He used to be a marathon runner. That's why I remember him when I was doing this. You know, now at 90, he is still faithfully enduring the race of faith. I had the joy of just having him in the house uh, three or four, four nights ago, and I had to stay with him uh, in the room because uh, just in case he needed something. 
he has many things, many ailments that he complained about. But, you know, it was just a joy to hear my father say, Ed, you know, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. He even prompted me to write, uh, to, to recite Psalm 23. It's good that I had it memorized. My daddy is a marathon runner, or was a marathon runner. He is still a marathon runner in the race of faith until now, enduring. He is fixing his eyes on Jesus. And this is the truth I'd like you to have for this uh, portion of the passage. Believers endure and finish the race of faith by fixing their eyes on Jesus. There is no other way. Believers endure and finish the race of faith by fixing their eyes on Jesus. To what extent is your life focused on Jesus? Who is the foundation of your life? whose words have the greatest influence on your thoughts, plans, decisions, and actions, whose life gives you the most delight, I trust that you will answer the words of Jesus and the life of Jesus. What are you going through where you need to consider Jesus and fix your eyes on his grace? Let me end. We just started a new year. We do not know with certainty what lies ahead. The starting gun seemed to have ushered a new problem. But we pray we see better days. Whatever trials and temptations come our way, we will endure and be victorious in Christ. Why? Why? Hebrews 10, 39. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed but those who have faith and preserve their souls. I trust that we will trust God. We will endure. We will follow the godly examples of people of faith. We will fix our eyes on Jesus. Endurance is a mark of genuine faith. In Him, in Christ, we joyfully persevere. We will run the race. We will boldly and joyfully Move forward in faith this 2022. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all of you. You've just heard a message from The Word with Green Hills Christian Fellowship Ortigas in partnership with Far East Broadcasting Company Philippines. We hope you can join us next week. God bless you.